Hey guys, gals, friends, and pals, this is Paul at East X Twitch, and welcome to another episode of Saturday Game School, where we learn about a different game nearly every Saturday of the year. Tonight, I'm joined on mic by Horror Acolyte. Hey guys. And we are streaming a game that asks you if it's okay to play the game. I hate when they do that. I think it has something to do with being developed in Windows or something. Anyway, we are streaming a game called Signal. Hey, there's iMade, and iMade says that you can cheat on every level. Yeah, so apparently you can get all the all 4,000 gamer score achievements in like half an hour or an hour, something like that. Restart is the Y button. Yeah, it does seem a little fishy, but hey, let's give it a shot. Roughneck Chronicles is another, like another adaptation of the book. You're right, and by the way, I have read the novel of Starship Troopers. I've read it twice, and I enjoyed it. Settings. It's written by Robert Heinlein, who used to be my favorite author as youth. I haven't read any of his stuff as an older adult. Like, the last time I read anything of his, I was about 25 or 26. So I'd have to see how I feel now that I'm 80. Rules. Let's look at the rules. Push the controller to move the remote drone. Remote drone also can use controllers. Match corners. I don't know what any of that means. Can you tell what any of this means? Uh, not in the slightest. <laughs> I assume it'll come through in like a tutorial type uh, eased into for the puzzles, but uh, like piece by piece. I hope so. And by the way, he's saying that it showed my email address. Dang, I didn't know that. But Or it showed an email address because the one that's on my XPL account isn't my real email. But anyway, good luck, everybody. Dr. Sabota, that's cool that you like Heinlein, too. Okay, this is the main map screen, I think, where you access the different... from which you access the different levels. Good luck, guys! Yeah, we've got Xbox and Windows 10 codes to give out tonight. Those Windows 10 codes can give you 4,000 gamer score as well, so how about that? Let's do this first level. Yes, this is a puzzle game. There's a place for everything, and everything in its place. That always reminds me of the Jetsons. Okay, it looks like I can move all the green ones at once with left and right, and up and down is going to move all the purple ones at once. I made, do you want to teach me how to play this? Because, <laughs> boy, it looks complicated. Puzzle games, as you guys know, are my absolute favorite genre, so I'm bound to be really good at this one. Seems super likely, doesn't it? Hey, Oblivion, good to see you too. And Firelight's here. Hey, Firelight. I hope you and Chicago are both doing very well. Oh, you never actually played it for real. Weak. Oh, that's so cool, Dr. Sabota. Your dad sounds like a nice guy. No wonder you ended up cool as well. Yep. Look, when the green is next to the purple, they can both move up and down at the same time, but the green moving left doesn't pull the purple one to the left. That's so weird. Sound like cool books. Yeah, I got no idea what the objective is. Does anyone? Oh! Look, I pushed a thing into another thing. Something's happening. Achievement, yo! I got that one legitimately, unlike some people. 150 gamer score. <laughs> All it took was there's a couple of cheat. minutes. <laughs> yeah, there's some way to like turn on autoplay and it'll just go through the levels for you. And if the game gets too hard, we may have to do that. Let's just do another level. So we're trying to get something to touch something else. I think that's what happened. We gotta play it legitimately for a while, right? What's your stance on puzzle games, horror acolyte? Uh, I like most puzzle games. Uh, there's probably a few in subgenres for the, the those type of games that I don't enjoy, but for the most part, I would say I enjoy them. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, Lyle. I I wish I could tell you more specifically. So all of them, all the green and purple move at the same time in this one. Oh, 
Oh, I see now. Okay, I need to restart this one. So there's some... Hey, I got an achievement for restarting. Every Jack has his Jill. That's <laughs> not... Have you seen the movie Jack and Jill? Uh, no, I haven't seen that. I'm sad to say that I was dragged along to see it in the theater, and it remains the worst... one of the worst two movies I've ever seen in the theater in my life. All right. Cool. Um, yeah, very, very, very bad. Uh, but you might wonder, well, what was the what was the worst? Or the other worst was a movie called Ultraviolet, which is super ridiculously bad. Yeah, that one went there. That was good. Yeah. Mila Jovovich. Yeah. Yeah. So I wonder. I think you win as soon as you place that in that hole, probably, but maybe not. This one, it would be the wrong hole. Like the the corner is lit up differently. I think I need to get... Oh, you're right. So I don't even see where I can move it to get it out of the way, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I push it in any direction... I need to get this sucker down there? Or where do I get another one to put in the hole? That's... That's a good question. Can I pull? Oh, you can rotate them with the A button. Okay, that helps. Uh, All right. Maybe you just have to rotate that one up there then as well that's already placed. Heck yeah, good call. All right. What next? Because <laughs> the level didn't end. Um. Oh, I just noticed those the two in the center on the far left there. They uh -huh. that one moved up somehow. I don't know how you did that. They weren't touching before. Moved out of its space. See, there's like the glowing green square. The green one in the middle? Yeah, Wait. it's like in the middle, left side. Uh, wow, good question. Does, do they all rotate at once, maybe? That's it. That could be it. Because, yeah, that, that was down in that spot before, then it moved up somehow. I didn't notice when it moved up, though. Uh-oh. Yeah. How did it even... Crap. Might just have to restart and then see how when that moved up or what caused that to happen. Well, I'm, I'm not sure. Dang it. Okay, let's do. All right. So I can, I can park the purple one right there for some reason. Like, what's even the point of the purple one? Okay, so try pushing this one in. Nothing bad happened when I did that, right? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm paying attention to when that, that middle one moves now, though. Thank you. Yeah, um, Thyrenia is saying she liked Ultraviolet. I mean, some people like the... God, what are those? The werewolf versus vampire movies? Underworld? Kind of reminds me of Underworld, in a way. Which I saw... Weird. That time I won. I wonder how that one got pushed off that one time. That yeah, one. I have no idea how you hooked <laughs> that up. Okay. Yeah, no, but like, so Ultraviolet is this weird sci-fi movie where everybody's supposedly a vampire, even though nobody sucks blood, which again is why it reminds me of Underworld, because like, you know, not even taking advantage of what the creatures are supposed to be or whatever. But I just remember like, nothing made any sense. And I, I saw it with a couple of friends, and they didn't enjoy it either. But anyway, okay. So we got some glowing purple stuff there. Yeah, I wonder what that's about. Huh, doesn't seem to interfere with the block getting pushed. Uh-oh, look. I can't rotate that one. Though it's just like disconnected from the the matrix. She was kind of hot in which movie? In Ultraviolet was she in it? I mean, I don't even remember who was in it. Oh, your ex loved it. Okay. Yeah, no people do like Underworld. Underworld is a movie about vampires and werewolves fighting, right? But they fight with guns and it's dumb. 
to me. I want to see them fight like, you know, as creatures and stuff. But also, the movie is so obnoxiously blue. It's just like nothing but black and blue. So I like to say that it's just a movie about the color blue because that's all it is. And like goofy names like Lucian and Lucius and Lucianius, I assume, you know? Like sometimes you got like a Bill Nye guy with maybe some bad makeup on. Um, but yeah, they have their fans. Can you cross um, that purple square? Um, well, I can't move the purple. My purple block can only go up or down. It can't go left or right. Oh, uh, you might have to restart then and have that one facing the top left corner before it gets to that side then. Oh, yeah, smart. Okay, so you're getting this better than I am. Well, you know, I do talk a lot, don't I? So yeah, I think it has to be facing that way before it gets to the other side. Wow, simple as that. Oh, Eon Flux. Yeah, you know, I never saw the Eon Flux live action movie. Was it any good? I don't remember liking that one very much either. Oh, I haven't seen it in a long time, though. Anything by you at Bull. But I was talking about in the theater. Like, specifically in the theater, Jack and Jill, which is an abhorrent comedy. Like, it's just everything about it is as bad as it could possibly be, you know? Well, there's that and Ultraviolet. Those are my two worst theatrical experiences. Uh, but there's others. I mean, like Man of Steel, Prometheus, Alien 3, Star Trek Into Dumbness. These were movies I did not enjoy, but they weren't quite on the same level of badness. Oh, man, I enjoyed pretty much all those. <laughs> <laughs> Even Prometheus? Seriously? Uh, admittedly, that one wasn't super enjoyable, but it had some moments that were really cool. But Yeah, here and there. Pretty. Yeah, the story holding it together? Dumb as a rock. Yeah. Plus, you got Guy uh, Pierce in that... You remember Guy Pierce? He's in that like awful old man makeup. Yeah, and th the only reason they did that instead of hiring a actual like elderly actor was the fact they planned on doing scenes with him when he was young, and they never ended up doing that for the movie. Isn't that goofy? So goofy. A little awkward. Yeah. Okay, let's try this. Fantastic Four remake was the worst film he ever saw, Deadpool says. Go, Sir Khalid. Yep. I have not seen Fant Four Stick. Because I could tell I wasn't going to like it. And yeah, that's a movie where apparently the original version before it got reshoots might have been kind of an okay movie, even if wrong headed, you know? But the reshoots just messed it up beyond recognition, is what I understand from videos I've watched. Oh, meet the sense. meet the Spartans. Yeah, that looks horrible. <laughs> well, focus on theatrical experiences, guys, because at home we can watch a lot of bad movies, and I've seen other really bad movies, like say the movie Gummo, so bad. But anyway, let's see. Also, the movie Kids. That oh, not good. Um, let's see. What am I doing here? I was trying to see Twilight in theaters. That was pretty <gasps> painful. Oh no. Well, so you must know a little bit about girls then. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was dragged by two two girls, yeah. I was the one of two guys in that theater. <laughs> Poor dude. Down at the bottom, it's like counting up your moves as you move in this, by the way. Oh, that is so weird. I can only move the purple block up when I'm touching the up control with the <laughs> green block. That's so different. Vlad. <laughs> I was I was dragged, Vlad. I guess my will. <laughs> hey, I mean, at least you... Maybe the girls liked it, right? Although, like... See, even though I've never seen a whole Twilight movie or read a whole Twilight book, I've read so much about them and I've watched so many videos about them. So, like, I totally now know how horrible they are. I just haven't fully subjected myself to them. And never will. It's always awkward because uh, I love vampires, but I find a lot of media does like really bad vampire stories i haven't seen many that i've liked well i mean is it possible to misunderstand vampires more than twilight does uh pretty hard yeah so maybe exactly. with uh ultraviolet but uh, maybe that's just my opinion <laughs> yeah yeah exactly because ultraviolet it had nothing to do with vampires why are you saying they're vampires same deal 
Hey, I got another achievement. Yay! But yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing like a, a good vampire story of some sort. Yeah, there are a few good ones. Let Me In was pretty good. Oh, I love Let Me In. Vampire. It's not bad. Have you seen the original version of Let Me In, which is called Let the Right One In? Uh, I did. I think I was one of the few that enjoyed uh, a more North American version, but I remember the original one being good as well. Yeah, I like both versions a lot. I mean, they're a little different, you know, and maybe the... Maybe the um, the Swedish version has a few qualities that the North American one lacks, but the you know they make they're just different. You know they're both great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Okay, I don't see the other place I'm supposed to push one of these. Oh, right there. Are you right beside it. Yeah. Oh. Crap. Well, that one's oh crap. It still goes. How do I do this? How do I? Move uh, one. It looks like you have to use that green piece to block that top one from moving to the left while the other ones move, maybe? Is that possible? Green piece? Well, how? I mean, they all move when I push any of them. So, how do I do that? I'm not the right guy to play puzzle games because I just am bad at them, even though I'm smarter than the average bear at least some have said oh I can block it did that do anything yeah that did it okay it was it involved that upper right part like you said oh no it didn't okay never mind this is a hard one I don't get it code vein I'm not familiar with that one just got an achievement for restarting again. Not implemented. Undo at least one step. Oh, I see. So that wasn't restart, it was just undo. Code Bane was the Bandai Namco like anime souls like. Oh yeah. That looked alright. It was pretty good. Um I could push so this middle one over to the right, but that wouldn't do anything helpful, would it? Um, all I know is we need to get you need to get them in the same row so they can all be pushed because they all have the same square and the same line. So they have to be there has to be a way to like uh, position them in, in such a fashion that they all can become in the same row. Uh oh. Uh oh. I got these two vertically aligned, but I don't want them vertically aligned, right? Yeah, okay, so like that. Crikey. Oh, that one in the upper right is stuck there now. Why is it stuck? You have oh, to move one, two yeah. to the right. Right, right. So when you say in the same row, you mean horizontal horizontal row, or do you mean column? Vertically, column. they have to be in the same row when we're pushing them to the left, but I, I, I'm not sure how to stop them right now still, to arrange them in that order. Yeah, this is like a brutal sliding puzzle. You know like those sliding puzzles where you have to move them a certain way? I've never been any good at those. Yeah. There's a number of those puzzle games out recently. Whoops. No, that's just going to do the same thing over and over. Middle block to the right, and then move the other right. one to the... <sighs> it's got to involve sticking... close. You think? I don't think. How many spaces different do I need them? I need the one on the right. Yeah, like that. Okay. So, like this. No. Like this? No. I 
I'm not smart enough for this game. We've just learned that. Oh, try, try, uh, go push into the left again. Oh, no, no. Oh. You have to get that one in the bottom locked into its spot again, I think. Okay. Alright. And then now I think you need the... You need to push up on the middle one. Okay. And then up on the, the left one. Ooh. I've... Oh, sorry, the sorry, the one that's like up top, sorry, not the left. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, actually... Oh, no! Oh no! No, sorry. Oh no! Oh no! I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I'm trying to undo. Is it gonna let me undo it? I undid it. All right. Now what? Okay. I just saw it a moment ago. What the hell did I see? Uh... You guys in the audience, what have you been playing this week? Ooh. No, I lost it. I lost what I was seeing. That's fine, Firelight. If you guys want to have fun in the bath together. That's actually pretty excellent, and I'm jealous. Sorry, what were you saying? My partner's at a birthday dinner, so... I don't even have her companionship. Her non-bathtub companionship. Stranger Things, True Colors, what? Oh, is that a game? They've been playing No Man's Sky. Have you figured anything out? I'm not... No, I'm, I'm just thinking about it still, looking at the pieces. Let's try that cheat mode. I heard there was a cheat mode, right? How do we do that? I'm a... Can you tell us how to... <laughs> I'm a definitely knows that. Yeah, that sounds rad. <laughs> Chicago. Yeah, you just made it sound real sexy, Chicago. Um, is there not a button that brings you to a pause menu? X. What does the X button do here? B just pulls me out. Yeah, Ima, do you want to tell us how to do the cheat mode? Oh, it's like Life is Strange, but with Stranger Things. Oh, lordy. Giggity. Outlast 2 is leaving Game Pass. I guess Game Pass is going to outlast Outlast 2 then. Yeah, I guess Ima must be away or something, because he's not responding. Um, well, let's just play... Maybe we should play a different level and see how that goes. It wouldn't hurt. Alright, what do we got? But, I mean, this, this game is complex. We got one that needs to go over there, I can see that. Where does the other one need to go? Can't see it. Uh, I noticed that the square uh, in the middle, beside the one that needs to go into, there's like a different symbol on that piece. I don't, I can't quite make out what that is. Oh yeah, you're right. I wonder if that's a clue or anything. Ooh, Wolfblade's been playing Chrono Cross. Which platform are you playing it on, Wolfblade? You do the code for the main menu. Okay. Uh oh. Look at that. The block is stuck in the purple for some reason. Hunch of Horrors knows as well. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Let's go do that real quick. Oh, you were on it. The other square's right there to the left of the starting. Oh, interesting. Okay. Go to reset. Move the purple square all the way to the right. Press A. This action cannot be cancelled. That sounds ominous. Yeah. I don't understand. How do I push it down? I, I did it wrong. That's what the universe is telling me. Okay, move it all the way to the right. Press A. Go to start and press A to start the game. Let's just do that. Let's find out. It's very computery, isn't it? Are we sure I did it right, though? So, having done the code... Now what? 
Oh, press left trigger uh, on map. Okay. On this part or on the real map? Probably this one, I imagine. Dang it, I gotta do it again. Oh, on that part. Okay, my bad. Alright, we're trying it. Whoa! Look at that, I'm smarter than I thought. Not. Oh man, you got so good at this. <laughs> For reals. It's because I took that, that drug from Limitless. <laughs> <laughs> NZT, or I forget what it's called. One of those things. Smarter than your average bear. Well, you know, I did happen to redeem a code for the Windows version as well. Don't be jealous, Darker Player. I know Glay Lancer is another one that plays itself. Really? If you enter a mode, yeah. Oh yeah, I own that one. So do I need to... Oh crap, it took me out here. Anyway, so I gotta do this every time, or don't back out. There's probably a better way to back out than what I'm doing. Yes, both versions have 4K, Jono. By the way, it is $5 on Xbox and Windows 10. Not a bad price. I mean, that's 10 bucks for all that gamer score. Steam version is four dollars in case you wanted to play it on Steam and get achievements that nobody cares about. You can get money back on Steam achievements, so what like a quarter? <laughs> yeah, it's like next to nothing. Maybe like a dollar per game. Gotcha. If that. Um So how do I get out of this menu? Like, to get back to the world map. Because pushing B takes me back to the actual main menu. I don't know why those green squares haven't changed into something else. You would assume they would open up over time. Yeah. Javoris, can you suggest what to do? Oh, wait, here's one that I can play. Oh, you just probably have to do that one then. Unlocks the other ones. But I'm holding L. Look, it's not playing itself. I don't understand. And why would I? Well, that was easy enough to win on my own. The hard part is finding the levels. Sounds about right. Okay, now is it going to let me do the autoplay? No? Do I have to go back and redo the the cheat code thing, maybe? Just got some kind of achievement. Moved permanently. Complete the first level. Cool. Hey, no time for games. We're glad you made it, dude. There it goes. Look at that. I'm a puzzle wizard. So I know you're playing that you're playing some kind of scary game earlier. Martha is Batman's mom. Is that what it was called? Yeah, <laughs> Martha's dead. <laughs> oh. Why don't you tell us a little about that? Uh it's a game developed by uh, LKA Games or Studios. Uh, I can't recall what they prefer for their, their company, but uh, by Al Qaeda. Well, by Wire Productions. Oh, I see. But yeah, it was uh, essentially about this: these two twin sisters, and one of them dies, <laughs> and then the other one assumes the identity of her identity of her sister because she was like the favored one, and then she tries to figure out what really happened regarding her sister's death. Ooh. And uh, yeah, I think it talks a little bit about a, a legend that's kind of famous in, um, I think, parts really? of uh, either Europe or South America, called the Lady of the White Lake. Oh. Is King Arthur in this game? No. <laughs> Not that I'm aware <laughs> of. I see. So a different Lady of the Lake, perhaps. Just a bit, yeah. She's not as friendly, probably. Yeah. Oh. Could she be La Llorona? 
I, th I think that's kind of what it's themed after. Um, they also had a similar theme in the, the Netflix series, um, The Haunting of Blah Bly Manor. Ah! Is that the sequel to the first Haunting show? Yeah, it's a, I, if you call it a sequel, yeah, it's because it's isolated shows, so like an anthology kind of series. But but yeah, it is a, a continuation, or not a continuation of the series, but the next series. Is it the same actors or no? Uh, yeah, it uses a, a handful of the same actors from the original Haunting of Hill House, which was really good. I, I loved the first series. I liked it, but it was confusing. But, I mean, I guess that should be expected. If I had watched it with a smarter person, I might have enjoyed it more. I don't know. Yeah, My I partner... can see some stuff would be. <laughs> I mean, you know, it deals with, like, weird... Maybe I... Maybe I'm left a little bit less enthusiastic about it just because it's kind of a downer, you know? Like, uh, not a very happy ending. Oh, it's depressing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But my, my partner at the time, though, she, you know, she loves scary stuff, so she liked the show, but, um, but yeah, I wouldn't say she was, like, the smartest cookie or whatever. Plus, she was really mean to me. But it's neither here nor there. That might taint the experience of the show, too. Yeah. <laughs> another show that she and I watched together, another spooky show, was that awful Castle Rock show. Did you ever watch that? Yeah, I had a lot of people that really tried to hype that one up. And uh, maybe if you're a big Stephen King fan, which I do like Stephen King stuff, but I did not care for most of Castle Rock. I'm a decent Stephen King fan, you know, like I've read or seen the movies of some of those things, but it just wasn't telling a good story. It was like mystery box after mystery box, you know? It's like, I don't appreciate too much mystery to where it doesn't feel like there's anything smart going on behind the scenes, you know? It's like just random things are happening to be confusing. Yeah, I, I don't mind too much mystery even, and I just thought the story wasn't very engaging, but the actors did a pretty good job for the most part, but not enough to redeem this show for me. I guess there might have been, like, I only watched the first season, but I think it had maybe, like, one or two fun episodes and a lot of episodes that were less than that. Hey, Kano, yeah. look, it's Alejandro. Alejandro, are you really back? It's good to see you, dude. Alejandro once gave me a PlayStation 4. How about that? Oh, a nice guy. Yeah, very nice. And Do you want to show? Show what? Oh no, you you go. It's all good. <laughs> oh, Aww. I love you too, Alejandro. But I was gonna say he used to stream a lot himself, you know. And I I worked a graveyard job, and I would watch his late night streams. He's been a co-host several times. Cause he has a delightful accent. Everyone likes a good accent, you know. <laughs> um, dang. <laughs> Man, if I had the money, Alejandro. Tomorrow's your birthday, huh? Gonna finally turn the big three zero. And now I gotta go hunt for the new levels that have unlocked, like what I made said. Seems like the hardest part of the game now. Tech guy, do you have a thick Canadian accent like Horror Acolyte here? Thick Canadian accent? What? <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's thick as maple syrup, buddy. I hey, think Brandy if you Bell. want a thick accent, you need uh, Atlantic Province Canadians. Oh, yes? Yeah, more of an accent for some of them, maybe. Yeah, I Newfoundland, see. as you know, what Tech guy was saying, yeah. I mean, they've got to have a... Sh yeah, if you have to say a new Finland, I mean, that's got to be a naturally very thick accent. Oh, he has a new Finland accent. Oh. oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah, we've never heard you. Tech guy, how come you never offered to, uh, to co-host with us? You've been a part of the community for years and years. Oh. Alejandro has a friend who lives in St. John. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I will assume not a. He doesn't live inside of an actual saint. It's probably a location named after the saint. Yeah, Saint John's Newfoundland. Yeah, that's, I think that's the one of the major cities. Gotcha. 
Not a Bayman accent. Bayman like the Dead or Alive character? I think he's a black guy. Ah. He lives in St. John's Wart. The natural antidepressant. <laughs> I actually met a couple people from there when I was at a tournament in uh, Ontario. Hmm, what, kind of, what kind of tournament? Um, I used to play competitive uh, Magic the Gathering, the wow. card game. Do you play the the free to play Magic game that's on mobile and computer? Yeah, I play Arena most mostly every day. Uh, I don't play it as seriously as I used to. They they like changed the ranking system for the game like a long time ago, and it kind of just like butchered where I was in my standings. So I just kind of didn't play as avidly after that. That's a shame. I've only played it off and on a few times. I mean, like, I really like the game of Magic, but I also don't have the time to dedicate to actually learn and, and be good and all that, you know? Yeah, that's definitely understandable. Especially if you want to keep up with the game in paper format, it gets super expensive. Ooh. I'm glad I made... Darn that Twitch. So everybody in the audience, has anyone been keeping up with Halo? Because, you know, was it the fifth episode of Halo that just aired, or was it the fourth? I forget. I'm not uh, five. Yeah. Five, yeah. The fifth episode, not to be spoilery, but it did have Master Chief grab onto a flying banshee. So, I mean, I think that tells you all you need to know about whether or not you should watch the Halo show. The answer is yes, you should. <laughs> yes. I mean, that is something I never expected to see in a TV show, a live-action TV show, but they made it happen. Yeah, the, the way the actual fifth episode ended, like, the, you know, cliffhanger-ish ending of it, not not great for the pacing, you know? It's like kind of a, like a, hmm, that's not where I would have ended it. But everything up until then was quite cool. <laughs> What do you mean, Lyle? Of course the Banshee's a flying vehicle. Oh, cool. Well, I mean, you'll have to let me know what you think, Thyrenia. I just talked about one little action thing, so... Not much of a spoiler. Oh, yeah, the Jackals do look cool. One other thing, they do introduce a new member of the Covenant who looks gorgeous, but then that member of the Covenant does nothing. It's like... I think that might be another little thing that annoyed me. It's like, hey, look at this guy. Oh, we're not going to have him do anything. And that was... It's like... What um, what a tease. I feel like this show might be a lot of fan service, but uh, I still have to watch it myself. So. Well, I, I mean, it's telling a story that's much different from the actual game story. You know, like, not, not worlds different, but it's definitely doing its own thing. But it, it does have crowd-pleasing moments, and there's nothing wrong with that. Nope, we're done. Yeah, take me good. Yeah, it's totally an aircraft. Thank you, Darker Player and Jono. Just gonna look for whatever level unlocked. Brandy's back. Say hi, Brandy. Hi, Brandy. Yay, that was a very quick dinner. I tried to talk her into having her friends come over after the stream, but it was not to be. It wouldn't have really worked out with our stream times anyway. Hi, Tech Guy. Hi, Thyrenia. Thyrenia, we want to play again. <laughs> you can speak at a normal volume, Brandy. I'm not talking. I know. I can't hear. Oh, yeah, you can't hear. So she doesn't know if you're talking. That's a problem. Who needs to figure out when? Oh, Thyrenia needs to. <laughs> Are Brandy's friends single? Yes, Tech Guy, her friend April is single. I'm not going to say <laughs> she would be a lot of fun to date. I'm guessing not. She's on chaos. She's a bit self-absorbed. This is well known to everyone who knows her. Independent is the, you know. Yeah, so like, nice word. we need to keep it family friendly, so I can't say anything adult about the implications of that. But I'm sure you can imagine them on your own. Vlad says, you just want to whisper. Okay. Sometimes. Duh, duh, duh. Yeah, I don't really like 
like the whole hunting for the levels thing is a bit of annoying. Exactly, Alejandro, exactly. There we go. Have you been watching anything on TV? Um, not really. Mostly just movies recently. I watched like the long Halloween animated Batman's, uh, the new Batman. Um, You're just in a Batman mood. Yeah. Well, I watched the the live action new one, and then I saw the long Halloween was on TV, and I was like, oh, I really want to see that. So, yeah, watched all three hours of that on HBO Max. Yeah, I think the animated ones were on HBO as well. Um, if I remember correctly. I know at least the first one is. I'm not. The second one could be as well, for all I know. I made yeah, is watching were... Upload. Oh, that's a good show. Yeah, that's on Amazon, right? Yeah, the second season just came out uh, not too long ago, like last month here. We do need to check that out. I guess I could go ahead and tell people about outer range everybody i mentioned in the newsletter all of us are dead oh i haven't heard of that wolf um Thyrenia? that sounds interesting so guys the show outer range it stars thanos he's the main guy he's a modern day rancher he discovers yeah it's very good so far in my opinion brandy likes it a little bit less she's not as much of a western person it's not actually a western but it, it's set on a ranch so of course you do have some cowboy stuff but, uh, you know, Josh Brolin, he's a great actor, and he he plays the dude. He's kind of a, a bit of a, God, a closed-off dude, you know? He, like, he doesn't talk about his feelings much and stuff. But he's got a mysterious past. I mean, there's a lot of mysteries in this show, but they have been filling some of this stuff in. I, You know, I hate to see what the actual... This, I mean, it's not a spoiler to say what the, the main premise of the show is, right? Because everybody... I mean, it would be in the trailer, I assume. Have you seen trailers for it? horror no uh, that one's kind of a mystery to me i just saw like a, a ad for it online i think but i didn't watch a trailer well it's a little bit twilight zone like or whatever this guy he discovers this strange hole in the ground on his ranch like a large hole like 20 feet across or something like that you know and i you know i don't want to say more than that but like it could it could be a thing where you never find out what happens when something goes in the hole you know but no you do eventually find out and uh, and there's characters with mysteries the main guy he's got some mystery to him and we haven't found that out but I mean they're filling in some of the mysteries and stuff so it keeps you really engaged with the mystery of it all but but not so much that it's unsatisfying hmm. this is called outer range it is on Amazon Prime video it is currently airing they're up to the fourth episode now I believe they're about an hour long. The actual the fourth episode is actually just over an hour. Man, I don't know where the next level is. That's it. Good. Okay, there's little guides. I see them now. I was just kind of ignoring. But yeah, I'm, if you like the sound of a mystery, I do recommend it. But as I mentioned in the newsletter, it is very dark. Like, visually, it is much darker than it needs to be. Like, Perfect Zero, who wouldn't mind that? Because people like uh, Perfect Zero like to adjust the brightness on their TV and stuff like but no I mean like I set up the the visuals on my TV you know from the Artings guide when I first got it I don't want to adjust it any beyond that just for one show and for the Batman the Batman is also too dark you remember that don't you uh, it was a little bit uh, too dark at some points yeah yeah so like try to watch something like that with any daylight coming from windows and stuff good luck being able to see it you know Oh yeah, there was a really dark Game of Thrones episode, you're right. I didn't actually see that one, but I remember reading about it. That's good, Tech Guy. I mean, I love the Batman. I'm just saying the Batman is lit too dark. You know, it's this weird trend in modern filmmaking. And it's not a good trend. Like, not being able to see things doesn't make them better. I think it saves them money on special effects, and that's why they're doing it. I don't know. Maybe just whoever sets the color up for the show is bad at their job. Yeah, I do have it right. I follow the Arting's guide, which is like, you know, the public authority on it. And it's fine for everything except overly dark things. Yeah, no, 
of course it's going to be somewhat dark, but they're like in a lit room and you can still barely see it because they've artificially darkened it, you know? People don't walk around in a room where you can barely see anything. They turn on a light and it makes things visible. Thank you, Vlad. Thank you. Oh, there's... <laughs> that man needed some other kind of eight, more HDR. I mean, maybe that's the case. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and it's still a good movie. It's just that it's a shame when there's parts that you can't see. Because you should be able to see everything. Why even make it an audiobook if you don't want people to see things? There are definitely parts in that movie, though, that were meant to be super dark, to have like certain things pop in the, the background. But, again, walking around in a lit room, it shouldn't be that dark, right? I mean, you, you do see what I'm saying. Obviously, there's parts yeah. where they're in a dark place, and it should be dark. Ah. No, this is like, you can't even see the actor's faces. Yeah, Brandy is saying that about the show. I'm sorry, you know, guys, I actually got a headset splitter so that Brandy and I could, like, hear the game audio and voice chat when I'm doing a stream. Because up until now, she hasn't been able to hear the game audio. But I didn't plug it in because she wasn't supposed to be back till after the stream ended. In fact, drones for the first time, whatever that is. Tom, quit trying to blame the displays. It's called Just Light It Like Everything Else. It's not that hard to do. They've been doing it for, I don't know, since the 1930s, maybe the 40s, you know? So this innovation of, hey, let's make it abnormally dark, like, it's got nothing to do with the displays. It's them being being weird, being unproductive. Yeah, I may, please let me know if you have Amazon Prime Video. I mean, I want other people to watch it because I think it's like... A little bit lesser known but it's got a big guy in it and the production values are good and the acting is great I'm really liking it <laughs> maybe you're right tech guy he was saving electricity by keeping it so dark yeah exactly oh the sea says hi is she feeling better thyrenia i'm sad that she has been sick Tom says it's because of HDR. I don't know. Severance. Yeah, I do not have Apple TV. Apple TV seems to have some cool exclusives. Like, they're going to have that Godzilla show, right? <laughs> there you go, Kano. Alejandro. Alejandro wants homework from the newsletter. He wants <laughs> to be a teacher on your off time, too. Why the heck not? Anything for my friends. Horror, are there any games you are looking forward to that haven't come out yet? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> on the spot. Uh, mostly, like, probably horror-themed ones. Uh, Scorn looks really good. That Ooh. was like a Kickstarter one from a while back. Interesting. Uh, other than that, Starfield is a pretty popular one that I imagine a lot of people are looking forward to as well. Oh, oh yeah, it's going to be wonderful. Yeah, Bethesda's games are usually pretty solid. Only I played too many that were genuinely bad. And look how cool Ghostwire Tokyo looked, right? <laughs> yeah, that game I want to try out now too. That was on my list before, but I'm a little more excited to see it after watching you play the start there. Neat, that makes me happy. Oh great, now I don't have a pointer to to the next playable level. I, I don't see any, at least. Ah! Tech Guy's telling us about a really big shoe, as Ed Sullivan would say. Then there's the game that uh, I'm sure you want to play as well, the Shredder's Revenge. Oh, yeah. Shredder's Revenge. I'm likely to get that slightly in advance of it coming out, like probably a week before, that kind of thing. It does not have a release date, but it, 
hopefully, you guys, you know, I wrote a lot of articles this week, everybody. I wrote like seven articles this week. I only put some of them in the newsletter, you know. But I hope you will all click on them and like them. You know, you have to scroll to the bottom of the article or it doesn't necessarily count as a hit. So please make sure you do that. And there's a there's a few different like buttons at the bottom. Like you can do a thumbs up or a, like a sad face and stuff. You know, if you guys would get in the habit of doing the thumbs up, that, that does help a little bit with discoverability. So we would appreciate it. Because I get paid for writing those articles, you know, so I need the views. <laughs> Gotta scroll past those five ads. Yes, there are a lot of ads. I apologize for that. <laughs> but please don't block them, because again, that's how I get paid. So. <laughs> yeah, that's how a lot of the smaller news sites operate. It makes sense, though. <laughs> but I mean, they're able to pay me. You know, if they if they couldn't pay me, it would be really hard for me to write as much. I'd still write things that I really cared about, but I couldn't write mm -hmm. seven articles in a week. You know, it'd be like one or two articles in a week. Yeah. Makes sense. Thank you, Alejandro. That's great. On Co-Optimus, Icky. Icky's been blocking the ads anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Again, please don't block them. Like, I know there are more ads than would be ideal, but please don't block them. And to Not tell you, bad. to give you an example of how tight money is for the site, I mean, like, Google started charging us for email addresses and we had to like start getting rid of some of the older staff members email addresses just to save money you know because like I mean the site makes money from the ads but it, it's not unlimited you know it's like it's enough for what I write and not much more well of course I've got an ad blocker too but I turn it off for this website for sites that I care about you know which of course are gonna be ones that I write about Oh, that's okay, Alejandro. His keyboard is a, a, a creeper from Minecraft. Does that mean, like, all the keys are creeper faces? Because that's actually kind of cool. Except for not being able to tell what you're, which keys you're hitting. Yes, yes, I'm sorry about the ads. Maybe his keyboard buttons explode when you touch them. <laughs> Oh man. But to to return to what you brought up, Shredder's Revenge this week got a a release window. People have been like whining for a release date for that game like crazy. Like certain Turtles fans like they literally sound insane or like they're little kids even though they're adults, you know. They're like, "No, I want a release date. I don't want any more news. I want a release date." You know, like babies. Like it it got old real quick. And, yeah, they've been doing it for months. Like and so now at least we have a release window, which I think has helped, but there's still some who are like, it's not a release date, you know? It's like, God, just, you don't want them to pick a release date when the game is not ready yet. Like, that's that's how Cyberpunk came out and was all buggy, you know? Yeah. It's like, the, the release date can only reasonably, select it, reasonably be selected when the game is far enough along to do so. That's what these people don't understand. Exactly. It's it kind of a hard balance to strike between wanting people to get hyped about your game and then following through with a release window that makes your game come out without any bugs or setbacks. So. For sure, for sure. And you know, as a games journalist, I'm a little closer to game development than just the average guy. Like, obviously, I don't know about programming and stuff, but I do know what the developers tell me, you know? Like, I know something of what it's like for them. And, yeah, it just wouldn't be any... Like, do you want them to release it and it has a bunch of bugs or it doesn't have all the levels they planned or something? Like, we don't want it as an early access game. We want it to be all the way done when they release it. That's a good question, Lyle. It's going to have four-player local. I don't know if it's going to have online. Do you know? Uh, not off the top of my head. I don't know for certain whether it has it, but I would assume it would have online co-op. Uh, with I that hope, because it's a well-publicized game and people really want it. But Lyle, the Turtles Cowabunga collection will have online multiplayer for several of the games. So if we both got that, we could enjoy some Turtles games together, and I'd love that. You don't have to get the Collector's Edition. It's only physical goods. It's not like you're missing out on a game or levels or something. But it's 150 US dollars. How many is it in Canadian maple leaves? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it was like 189 or something like that. Okay. A lot, I'm sure, right? How much is a normal game? Like a normal AAA game? Uh, I honestly don't even know anymore. I haven't bought one <laughs> in a long time. Really? 
I think it's like 70 bucks ish. But. Okay. Like a, a new gen AAA game is 70 for us, and a regular, like, not new gen exclusive one is 60. Oh, so it's yours, probably 80 and 70. Yeah, I would expect yours to be slightly more. Yeah, yeah um, uh, thank you, I made. Yeah, the so I wrote an article about the Calabunga edition, and I mentioned that it's expensive and that it's a bit controversial for how expensive it is. Because it comes with cool things, but the price they've chosen doesn't seem to be very closely related to what it comes with, right? So, that is a problem. But you know, that's going to lead to a bunch of clearanced product. Like, you'll be able to get it on clearance a few months later. I'm sure of it. Unless they actually adjust the price. I would say uh, for the... The U.S. price, it should be either 120 or 100. I think 100 would be generous, and 120 would be a bit tight but reasonable. But 150 is too much for sure. Yeah, Lyle, you're right. Man, I cannot find the next level. That's like I made said. That is the worst thing about this game is just not being able to find the levels. Okay, it's over to the right. I see it now. Uh, can somebody share the recent articles, please? It's an exclamation article, I think. And if it's not one of the ones that Lyle has set up as recent ones, then somebody could... Okay. Well, there's two recent articles. Okay. Um, can anyone copy and paste the link to the specific article we're talking about? I made. We got to get you signed up for the newsletter if you don't mind, and then you could you could see whatever stuff like this that I send out every week. We only send out one per week. You know, we like there's never a time that we do two per week, and it just lets you know what we're streaming that night. It lets you know who won the last week's contest. I try to make it a pretty good newsletter. Poor acolyte says it's his favorite newsletter of all time, and that's really nice of you to say that, dude. Oh, no problem, man. We'll support you. And you got to keep up on Tyler's business. Cause... That's true. You can even hear about Tyler, who's in jail right now. That's why he's not here tonight. Thank you, Lyle. You're the best. He just shared both of the Turtles articles that I wrote this week. I can easily mute for the stream, but not my co-host. So, just so you know. The audience never hears me cough, though. Aw, oh, thank you, Alejandro. That's very nice of you. Yes, he's in jail again. Can you believe it? Tyler is such a goofball. Yo, hey. Vixatino. You get here late tonight? You probably had to work. Has to stop selling black market pop it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he does a lot of goofy things, but this time it's for throwing a chair and it hit a lady in the head. So, not good. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> Our newsletter used to always have adventures of Tyler, you know? Like, they'd be real elaborate sometimes. But they were hard to think of, so now it's a little less frequent. It's like, the newsletter took me two hours today, and 45 minutes of that were thinking of an adventure for Tyler. Can't do that. <laughs> No, I am serious about that you should subscribe to the newsletter I made. Like, seriously, you won't mind. It's a pretty good newsletter. And in case you didn't know, Tyler is our regular co-host. He's here most weeks, but not this week. Because of being in jail. What are you talking about, Brandy? Don't mislead people. It's true when he gets time off for good behavior. <laughs> Hopefully very soon. <laughs> So, Horror Acolyte, um, I promised that we would have you talk up your stream the next time you're on mic. Why don't you tell us about your streaming on Twitch? Oh man, I hate plugging myself. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mainly stream uh, indie games for the most part. I'm just kind of a casual streamer. I just do it uh, on a daily basis for now, just because I pretty much stream whenever I play a new game. Uh, every now and then I will try something AAA, but over the past few years I've really gotten a passion for playing indie games, so it's mainly what I focused on. And then if I get a chance every now and then I like to play 
or themed games, which is my favorite genre. I was uh, fortunate enough to try out Martha today, which was a, a really good uh, horror-themed one to try out. Yeah, that's nice of uh, Javor's to hook you up. Yeah, Javor's, that was awesome of him. I was really surprised when he when he gave that to me, too. It's out of nowhere. Just uh, sent it to me. <laughs> yeah, I thought it might have been a stream giveaway or something, but it was just, just to be nice, huh? That's cool. Yeah, I won a lot of uh, stuff from Javor's, too, in his stream, but yeah, that one was just, uh, just random. Uh, I mean, in a nice mood. How did I not know that Javor streams? Could it be that it's because he never told me? I feel like that's why. Uh, that... Javor's a pretty humble guy. I don't think I've ever really mentioned him uh, that he streamed in anyone else's stream before unless they brought it up, so. Gotcha. Yeah, he told me about that I made. Is is he the way that you came to our stream or did you find us a different way? I forget. Uh, I can't recall if I seen you guys through uh, Mutual's uh, message on Twitch, or if it was on um, Twitter. Um, I think it was Twitter, but I'm not 100% certain. Hmm. But the fact that, I mean, but you already knew Javor's also, so that that's interesting. Yeah, I'd, I'd known Javor's for a bit. I think he was one of the first people I started watching on uh, Twitch, actually. And it kind of just branched out from there to a number of other people. Of course he's a cool guy. He's part of our community, and we have a, com a great community of people. Good luck, guys. Well, that's really neat. I mean, you know, like, for variety streamers like us, it's hard to, to build beyond a certain point, because Twitch certainly doesn't help you, right? So every time we get oh, a new... True. We get a new cool member of the community, it's like, it's great. You know, we love that. Yeah, I've, I've really grown to like a lot of the communities on Twitch over the past year and a bit, which is when I've kind of been active in it. And uh, definitely meet a number of interesting individuals in different chats, so it's really cool to check out different streams. Right on. I'm not so good at watching, you know, like, I'm not very interested in watching random people's streams. Like, I have to have some kind of connection to that person, you know? So somebody being a part of my community, obviously that's the connection. Like that's all I need, and then I'm happy to watch them. But like also, like I don't mind watching friends of a friend, you know. So I made, you know, obviously I, I like watching his streams. Although I made's a part of our community now too, which is excellent, you know. And and it'll be that way. Just give me some kind of connection to the person, and and then I'm happy to watch them. Yeah, it makes sense. I know with Twitch too, if you have like. A number of different streamers with like high viewer counts and stuff like that it's really hard to kind of build that rapport with someone uh, so obviously there's hard to build a connection at all uh, with those people so yeah I, I usually don't watch too many streams like that myself other than maybe like a developer or something like that but yeah when there's a particular so. event or preview you want to see yeah mm -hmm. exactly well, let's let's talk a little. We're getting towards the end of the stream. We're gonna keep going for just a little bit longer because we started a bit late. As long as everybody's down for it, but we could talk a little bit about our upcoming streams. You know, guys, I finally sent out a lot of code requests for the stream. In case you all didn't know, you know, like we give out prizes every stream, right? And that actually takes a lot of work, and I don't get any help with that work. It's not like Tyler does some of it or something. Like, it's, it's up to me. Like, I, I look at what games have been released within a certain time frame, then I go to the developer's website and I find a way to contact them and I email them and, and try to talk them into it, you know? And for every 10 requests we send, we get about one positive, you know, one person say yes, like one developer. So it's, it's like, gosh, it's a lot of time and effort for relatively little little reward but it keeps the stream going you know as long as i put in the time to send the emails so i sent out like 30 emails and it took about two hours just so you know it's like just sitting there doing this research and emailing and we have gotten back i already had one game lined up independently of that but from my sending of the 30 emails we got three more games i believe is the right number and then we have one that's like basically a soft yes it's probably going to work out and we'll find out in a week or two so, um, but what kind of games do we have coming up, 
since I've told you the effort that goes into it. And by the way, guys, the effort, it's paid off by you guys tuning in and hanging out with us every week. And especially our excellent, awesome subscribers who, you know, who put their wallets where their, their mouth and their heart are by, you know, supporting us financially. But... Anyway, what games are we streaming? We've got Car Mechanic Simulator 2 Pocket Edition from our friends at Ultimate Games, the Polish game developer. We've streamed several of their games before, and they're always, you know, I mean, like, they're just job simulation games, but they're usually pretty fun and relaxing, you know? I don't know, have you caught any of those streams, Horror Acolyte? I'm not sure if I've seen many of the sim games streamed by you. Uh... To be fair, I'm generally not a huge fan of that that genre myself. But, <laughs> I mean, uh... <laughs> I'm not saying I am either. Uh, but, but you know, we're a variety streamer, so like we we love just checking out different kinds of games, including things mm -hmm. that I may not necessarily personally be interested in. Uh, but but also we like to be able to give out free copies of those games, you know. So that's that's a big part of what we choose to stream, right? But but anyway, yeah, we oh neat. Doctor Sabota says it's fun. But we, that, that's going to be a Switch stream. You know, we'll be giving out Switch copies because it's the Switch version that we're streaming. Man, I hate looking for the levels in this game. That part is lame. But besides that, what else have we got? We've got a game called Cave Digger, which there's a sequel coming out. And Cave Digger 2 is a VR game. So Cave Digger 1 is probably first person, I would imagine. I actually don't know what it looks like because the Xbox site wants you to sign in for it even though it's not rated M. You know, like, they want you to, like, put your date, your birth date. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but anyway, we've got codes for that, so it'll be cool, whatever it is. Helps if you're a car geek. As long as it's easy to play. ASMR sim? No, I do not care for ASMR one little bit. Okay, finally. Jeez. Like cheat code to build a car for you. Fix it yeah. for you. Uh, let me look at the list of, of games, because I should know this stuff. It's hard because I just set up the schedule, so I don't know exactly every every bit of it. But You have House of the Dead next week. Yeah, next week we'll be streaming House of the Dead, and that one we did not receive prizes for. Not because I didn't ask, but because demand is so high for that game, you know? And that's okay. But, but I really want to stream it, because it's just a game I'm very interested in, and I know some of you guys are interested in it, too. So, of course, we're going to stream that one, and Brandy, hopefully, will be able to play along with me as we stream it. So, gosh, we haven't done a shoot 'em up in a while, so that'll be cool for sure. Do you like that genre? Uh, I like shmups. I'm pretty terrible at them, but I usually enjoy playing them. <laughs> I'm not so great at them either, and when they're a bullet hell one, like, bullet hell ones I are a bit annoying, you know, like, uh, they're just too focused on being hard and not focused enough on being fun, is what I would say about bullet hells, but, <laughs> but anyway, this one, guys, it's interesting, like, a lot of you guys in our audience had Windows phones back in the day, right? Well, this one is a remake or an enhanced version of a Windows phone game, so... If you played Shoot One Up on Windows Phone, then you're going to get to see the big Xbox version. And it's two-player local co-op. So maybe we'll get Brandy to play for a little bit. And then what else? Cave... Oh, yeah, Cave Digger, which I already mentioned. So, yeah, I guess in total, those are the games that we have definitely lined up. But you guys remember we streamed a game called The Explorer of Night, which had 4,000 gamer score. And, well, we have another game that we'll probably be getting from that developer called 50 Years. I don't know much about it. It's not a platformer like Explorer of Night, but hopefully it'll be cool. And the developer guy, he's really nice. Typing of the Dead, that would be so nice on consoles. I had that on Dreamcast, and I loved it. Do you, Have you owned any legacy consoles, Horror Acolyte? Uh, yeah, I used to be big into collecting retro games a few years back, and then I kind of faded out from that a bit, but, uh, I, I do own a majority of the old consoles, like, pretty much everything Nintendo and up for the most part. Neat. Yeah. I just like you missed. Gotcha. I've still got, like, a Dreamcast and a Genesis and a Sega Saturn, but I sold off my actual game collections for them, which... I mean, it makes me sad that I had to do that because I loved those games and I collected them when they were coming out, you know? 
but my my previous partner she didn't hold up her end of the financial stick or however you say that you know like so I was broke all the time and it was like if we want to pay the rent I gotta sell some old games you know and, and that's what I would have to do it sucked I even had to sell my Double Dragon 2 arcade cabinet like not an arcade one up but a legitimate original arcade cabinet that I had for like 10 years so that's a shame that's terrible yeah, I mean, I still miss it, but I've got a Double Dragon themed IRK cabinet now, and that's cooler in a lot of ways, but it was so nice having the real thing. Miss it. Mm -hmm. And look at that, Vlad's telling us about his collection. He's got NES, Nintendo 64, GameCube, and PlayStation 2. And yeah, Darker Player, I think we'll get Windows 10 codes for 50 years, I'm not completely sure. Oh. Yeah. I made it the same way as me. Like, he bought them back when they came out, and he still has them, apparently. It was kind of funny because right before I started collecting games back in the day, I uh, threw out Old Man 64 boxes like a month before. Mm. Uh, why? God, me. why? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, it's pretty so rough. Sad. Yeah, but eventually you learn that we should never throw the boxes away to a game. The yeah. box of the game, yeah. Ever again. And yes, he only has the Zelda box, so most of his NES games are not complete, I think is what he's saying. Yeah, that's true, Darker Player. Microsoft licensed a Killer Instinct Arcade 1-Up cabinet. Oh, guys, I totally forgot to mention in the newsletter that I got a Simpsons Arcade 1-Up cabinet just last week for 200 bucks. Super good deal. That cabinet launched at five hundred thirty dollars, and we got it for two hundred bucks. So much of a better price, especially because this cabinet—it's only got two games on it. It's got the Simpsons arcade game, and the Simpsons Bowling, which is another arcade game that was released that you may not have ever played. Uh, but I'm so happy because I love the Simpsons arcade game. It's a classic beat 'em up. Have you ever played it? Uh, yeah, I played that one actually at a couple like I think water theme sort of theme parks back in the day is in like the little arcade sections neat gotcha i played it at a like a it's kind of a fun center it's sort of like a pizza place where you know like chuck e cheese is you may not have that mm -hmm. in canadia but but it's like a not at like a chuck e cheese because it's one of like a bigger place where they have like big slides and and things for kids to climb on and stuff so a more elaborate kind of fun center but that's where i first played simpsons arcade and Caveman Ninja, or Joe and Mac, which is another classic arcade game. Love Joe and Mac, yeah. Nice. Which, by one the way, I... Box games. Oh, sorry. Ooh, you have it on the Super Nintendo? Yeah, it's one of the few box Super Nintendo games I still have. Sweet. Well, I've got Joe and Mac on an arcade 1-Up cabinet, because it comes on the Burger Time cabinet, but it's really not the best way to play Joe and Mac, because uh, it's got a vertical monitor, but that's a horizontal screen game, so the screen is like letterbox on top and bottom for Joe and Mac and it you know it just it's like you get it kind of a tiny image that way which is a shame cool game though but uh, but anyway yeah I'm really happy about the Simpsons and Alejandro I, I posted a link that you can use to find it locally if you're interested in trying to find it yourself or anybody it's in our discord in the deals channel our discord is actually really good you know like I wish more of our community would actively chat there and not just sign up and never come back after the first time they signed up I don't know why anyone does that but but anyway yeah like we've got a deals channel and whenever there's a cool video gaming deal that I see I like I don't just buy it for myself I share it in the deals channel so maybe somebody else can get in on it that's how I got the five dollar cyberpunk you know I wish they had that in Canada <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that is, that is a shame. Sometimes you could probably get an American friend to mail it to you, but I mean, I don't know how much it costs to mail things to Canada these days. Yeah, I'm not sure. It keeps going up all the time. And I seem to remember you guys get mail really late because your customs just takes a really long time compared to other countries for some reason. I can, yeah. For sometimes it's like really quick uh, for some reason. I have no idea why. Then other times, yeah, it'll sit there forever. Gotcha. Well, I made, when you got Cyberpunk, did you get the Steelbook? Because if you got the Steelbook, then $10 is not bad. I only got the regular edition for 5 Oh, wow, Lyle, that sounds like a good deal. I didn't see that one. Did you share it in the Discord? No. Lyle does chat on our Discord, though. 
Well, we probably should start wrapping these up, shouldn't we? But let's let Alejandro get back. Well, you got the steelbook. That's cool. That's a cooler case than what I got. I do collect steelbooks, by the way, but only for movies. Like, I've got a really nice Blu-ray collection. How many steelbooks would you say we have? Probably about 50, right? I'd say somewhere around 50. Yeah, and they're, you know, it's 4K Blu-rays and regular Blu-rays. But I've got nearly every Marvel movie in steelbook form. Like, there's only two or three that I don't have. Aw, oh, that's too bad. They canceled your order. Yeah, there was a really good Arcade 1-Up pinball table deal earlier this week. You could get an Arcade 1-Up pinball that's normally $700 for $150. Like, talk about a crazy deal. But I missed out on it because it was only alive for a little while and nobody told me about it, you know? So, that's too bad. And it's frustrating to miss out on an amazing deal like that. But anybody who bought it from Target got their order canceled. Amazon actually followed through on it and let people have theirs. So, good. thank you, Amazon, for that. Exactly right, Tech Guy. I do not like Man of Steel because it so badly misunderstands the character of Superman. It makes him so unlovable. Well, That's the best Dragon Ball Z movie I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, well, you could say that. It is a bit like Dragon Ball Z with them flying around and punching for practically an hour. Wow, nothing interesting is happening. Although, you know, I actually like the live-action Dragon Ball movie more than Man of Steel. And not a great movie, but better than that movie. Hey, look at that. Reset the main core. Progress 100%. Things are happening. <laughs> or is this a level that I just set? I don't even know what's happening now. I finished the game! USA! All right, everybody. Steam Sweets, you practically played <laughs> itself. Indeed. Thank goodness for that, because... Before people found out that cheat, you could just uh, you could look up a moves guide, like you know, like up, up, down, down, left, right, whatever. You know, like you could find guides like that. But this is so much faster and easier, so that was nice. So everybody, we've been playing the game Sig Null Signal for Xbox. It's also available on Windows 10 with 4,000 gamer score of its own, and on Steam. It's not a cross buy game. If you want it on Xbox and Windows, you got to buy both versions. But considering they're only $5 a piece, that's perfectly fair. And if you weren't going to cheat your way through the game, you'd get a lot of hours out of it because it's so hard, right? But, you know, you get a ton of gamer score if, even if you cheat, so that's kind of nice, right? So, Horror Acolyte, thank you for, for hanging out tonight. It was nice to just get to know you a little better, dude. Yeah, thanks for having me back. It was really fun. So, everybody, please remember, Saturday Game School takes place every Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. We always stream a different game, and we like to give out cool games when we do stream. So, please tune in. We'll see you then. And remember, don't hate. Appreciate it. Say bye to the kids. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs> bye. Too bad Tyler got himself locked up again. What an S-O-B. That ought to hold those little... No, I <laughs> <laughs> bye firelight we hope you guys had fun bye everybody good to see you chicago always really great to see you dr sabota nice hanging out with you too dude alejandro was here that's definitely a highlight i saw bx latino heat i made was here i'm an idiot also a streamer everybody so try to follow i made if you don't mind i'm an idiot Vlad Slavin was here. Vlad is another cool dude. You and him kind of remind me of each other. Vlad's a big toy collector, though, which is fun. Jono was here. We love our Jono. Darker player, of course. No time for games showed up and didn't say much. 